Carmichael's Big Band Christmas, featuring Ralph Carmichael and his big band, with special guest Margaret Becker and the Ralph Carmichael Carolers. Merry, Merry Christmas, and welcome to our Big Band Christmas celebration. I find great assurance in knowing that Christmas is a documented historical event. So our first group of songs will be all about the fact of Christmas. Now here's one called Once in Royal David City. It was written in 1848, especially for children. The lyrics are very visual and describe the geographical location and humble surroundings of the stable and the manger. Also, notice the regal melody that symbolizes Bethlehem, which was the city of Royal David's forefathers. So, here it is, once in Royal David's city.
Silent Night is the perfect wedding of lyric and melody and beautifully just documents the night of all nights. Be aware of uh, several elements here, the mystical hush around the manger, the awesome fear the shepherds felt, wouldn't you? And the fortissimo of the heavenly choirs and the blinding dawn of redeeming grace that illuminated the universe. Some night for a night that started out silent. Here it is, Silent Night. One bar. One, two, the time I began to discover chords and rhythm, I developed a real fondness for We Three Kings. But behind the musical beauty of this piece is a fascinating story of political intrigue and double cross. And it's not even alluded to in the lyric. Did you know that King Herod, under the pretext of wanting to pay his respect to Jesus, actually recruited these three guys uh, and plotted to the assassination of the Son of God? He figured that if their diligence paid off and they actually located the Christ child, then he would send in an assassin to finish the job. But the plan backfired. Oh, they saw the star and they found the Christ and they delivered their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But in the presence of Jesus, they were moved to a true worship experience. And subsequently, God revealed Herod's evil plan to them and they eluded Herod went undercover. So, 
If the arrangement gets a little rambunctious at times, it's because there's more going on than just three kings bearing gifts. We three kings. It was my great pleasure to work with our guest tonight on the Young Messiah Tour, and she's the greatest. Uh, the, it's hard to describe uh, her talents because she does everything well. She is a fabulous songwriter, very gifted. She, this is something a lot of people don't know. She could hold her own against studio musicians on her guitar. She's a wonderful guitarist. And over and over again, she's acclaimed the top female vocalist uh, in, in the Christian field. Please help me welcome Margaret Becker. Come on. Yes. 
Christmas morning Angels We Have Heard on High summarizes all the factual events of that glorious occasion, including angelic choirs, echoing mountains, jubilant shepherds, all eyes on Bethlehem with proud parents huddled around the manger. And the tagline of this singing telegram is Gloria in Excelsis Deo, which means glory to God in the highest. Here we have it, Angels We Have Heard on High. Thank you. The next few songs are about the symbols of Christmas. This is the fun part. As Mel Torme says, it's for kids for, from 1 to 92. You know, the symbols like the tree, the tinsel, the lights, the food, the gifts, the colorful wrapping, uh, the food, uh, snowmen, <laughs> jingle bells, sleigh bells, sleigh rides, and the food, and carols. The carols, that's the best part, really. Let's get right after the food. Let's get started <laughs> with a rollicking piece by Alfred Burt called Caroling, Caroling. You might remember it. Here we go. One, two,
And now, we'd, we'd like to do the Leroy Anderson classic. Uh, and I, but before we do, I have to tell you that uh, at the age of 14, uh, I picked a winner in a Christian talent contest in Seattle about mm -hmm, years ago. Uh, this chap that is going to play lead for us, the, uh, the solo for us tonight, and I'm so proud of him. When he showed up at the age of 14, he was about like this, shock of red hair, freckles all over his face, and a horn that stuck out almost as long as he was tall. And he did three choruses and a half of the Holy City that just tore the place down, and he won. Now, if you'll just do as good tonight on Sleigh Ride as you did on Holy City, <laughs> that'll be great. Uh, that's Daryl Gardner. And joining him are the wonderful Carmichael Carolers. Here we go, Sleigh Ride. <laughs> this carol called The Holly and the Ivy. Now what's interesting to me is the way this unknown lyricist takes the giant leap to find a connection between the holly and the ivy and the birth of Christ. But he did. He likens the white holly blossom to the purity of the baby Jesus, the blood red berries to Christ's redemption for poor sinners, the ivy thorns to the suffering of Christ, the bitter bark of the holly tree to the cup of gall the Savior must drink. But here it is, the holly and the ivy.
And now here's a, a, a long shopping list of all your favorite Christmas tunes rolled into one package featuring the band, the carolers, and our special guest, Margaret Becker. Here we go. Dashing through the snow in one horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing the sleigh song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, we're gonna jingle all the way. Hey, hey, hey. What fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Hey, Just like the ones I used to know.
But if you really hold me tight the most significant symbols of Christmas is the universal compulsion to share our bounty with others less fortunate. This has a grand historical precedent in the old English carol, Good King Wenceslas. It seems that Wences, who was a monarch in Bohemia, made a practice of taking meat and drink to poor neighbors on the Feast of Stephen's Day, which fell on December 26th. He heard of a destitute gent who had holed up in a run-down cabin some distance from the castle. So he asked his page if he knew anything about such a person. The page said, yes, it's true, but surely you're not going out in this blizzard tonight. But he did. The king took the page with him, toting the Christmas basket of, of goodies, and listen now as we describe good kings, the good king's miserable mission of mercy. Good King Wenceslas. Thank you. 
Well, tonight we've talked about the fact of Christmas, the symbols of Christmas. Now let's think about the reality of Christmas. By that, I mean that the Christ of Christmas can take up his abode in each of our hearts. And we can have Christmas 365 days a year. God rest ye merry gentlemen tells us just what can this it can mean on a day-to-day -day basis. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from the power of sin, freedom from fear, freedom to trust and to love, freedom to sing praises of thanksgiving. So let's focus on the reality of Christmas with God rest ye merry gentlemen. Now help me welcome back Margaret Becker. I like to do one of my all-time favorite lullabies.
And now, the grandest Christmas hymn of all, my favorite, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Thank you. 